Whenever you rent or buy a video, you need to be sure that the film you choose is suitable for the audience at home. This film has been classified 18, which means it's for adults only. An 18 film will certainly have an adult theme and might well contain strong scenes of sex or violence, which could be quite graphic. It may also contain some very explicit language, which will frequently mean sexual swear words. The video certificates are there to give you the chance to make an informed choice. They allow you to have peace of mind and be entertained. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the film. You want to take me to the movies, sir? Since the dawn of man, conservatives have been spoiling our fun. Bloody dinosaurs. If you were born any time after the mid to late 80s, you kind of take for granted that every home video has one of these labels on it, just like the ones in the cinema certifying it's appropriate for these audiences. That wasn't always the case. The advent of home video was exciting. You could pick up a tape from a market store, which the owner had copied from his mate who had imported it from somewhere, and experience home cinema. Neat. In the early days, the only movies you could rent were low-budget sex and horror titles, since the major studios were initially a bit reluctant to get in on the new medium over concerns of piracy. P -p piracy Since this medium was so new and exciting, regulations hadn't quite caught up yet. Home videos were not required by law to be submitted to the British Board of Film Classification, so there was a few loopholes to take advantage of here, namely shockers that hadn't a chance in hell of getting a cinema release being the new biggest craze. Anyone could feasibly set up their own video label, duping copies in a garage or the back of a shop. The smaller ones would only distribute a couple of hundred tapes. Horror and pornography are always big sellers, and since it costs money to get a movie certified for cinema in the first place, you could just get it put straight onto video and sold in video shops across the country, which is a much cheaper option. Bigger companies eventually wanted to play ball and submitted their films to the BBFC for classification, cutting and censoring if required. But who's going to know if you've got 500 copies of Cannibal Ferrets waiting in a warehouse in Kent? We know the old adage, you can't judge a book by its cover, and the same is often true for VHS tapes. But everyone has picked one off the shelf of their choices video and rented it based on how cool the cover art was, only to discover it's a movie equivalent of paint drying. So, one of the main forms of advertising for your low-budget B-movie was just making the cover as eye-catching as possible. Gore, boobs... Uh... In 1982, Vipco, the UK distributors of Driller Killer, took out a four-page ad in the January edition of television and video retailer magazine, depicting the cover with a guy with a drill in his head, netting themselves a hefty amount of complaints to the Advertising Standards Agency. The same year, Go Video came up with a surefire way to drum up more publicity and sales for the controversial film Cannibal Holocaust and wrote anonymously to Mary Whitehouse of the National Viewers and Listeners Association, complaining about their own film. White House initiated a public campaign against video nasties. In crimes of violence in this country. I care about that. You should care about that. Oops. Papers such as the Sunday Times and the Daily Mail, oh joy, relished in this and made sure to push this issue to the wider population, causing a moral panic and citing these nasties are far removed from the suspense of the traditional horror film. They dwell on murder, rape, sadomasochism, mutilation of women, cannibalism and Nazi atrocities. As well as castration, sadistic attacks on women and violence including the use of chainsaws or drills. As we well know, the increase in violent crime is always blamed on movies, <laughs> rock music, and video games. Your garden has attracted a buzzle gum. They like almost any flower, but they prefer buttercups. After all, that's why we had to get the parental advisory labels on any music that has a rude word in it. The media is what decides government policy in this country, so it was all downhill from here. I think if I best sum it up by quoting you a very small news item that I spotted in the Daily Mirror. It was about a very nasty attack on some ponies in the south of England. And at the end of telling this story, there was a quote from the Margate police in which they said that the attacker must have been influenced either by video nasties or a new moon. The Obscene Publications Act of 1959 had only been amended to cover erotic films in 1977, and obscene, in this sense, was defined as anything which may 
tend to deprave and corrupt persons who are likely having regard to all relevant circumstances to read, see or hear the matter contained or embodied in it. Uh, the Act allowed police to seize videos from retailers if they thought the material was in breach of the Act, and police raids on video hire shops increased with seizure of completely arbitrary titles. We get simple farmers, local businessmen, Congress folks from Austin, young boys looking for sin. Ooh, I love to dance a little sidestep, now they see me, now they don't. 75 miles until we get to the chicken. Yeah, that one. Retailers asked the DPP, the Director of Public Prosecutions, for some guidelines, since at the moment it was up to what each police constable thought was obscene, and considering Greater Manchester had a very devout Christian as a chief, raids on video shops skyrocketed. The list would change from week to week and up and down the country, it would be different, with a total of 72 appearing at some point or another. And so, a list of the films that had been successfully prosecuted or had charges filed against it was released. That list was the DPP list of video nasties, and so a shopping list of must-see titles was born to the B-movie aficionado. The people who put through the act believed that what they were seeing was real. And that's more terrifying than anything that's in those films. Copies of copies of copies were made, literally blurring the lines between movies and realism even further and aiding the campaigners, even though many of them had never even seen a video nasty once. I have never seen a video nasty. I wouldn't. The police had to watch everything they seized to make sure it was what they were looking for and capable of depraving and corrupting. Not them though, they were far too intelligent and middle class for the films to corrupt them. It became a bit of a class issue, and Conservative MP Harry Greenway made it very clear which demographic of society he deemed most susceptible. I confirmed from my own research and observation that the first thing that people with redundancy money buy is a video. And? They're often a higher priority in the homes of people who are not particularly articulate and who do not read books or listen to music very much. In some homes, videos even take priority over food and furniture. Let's be honest though, these people were born in the 1800s and had never seen a horror movie, so of course they thought it was too real. Totally legit studies were done, including one study which said 40% of children under 12 had seen them. Because only 47 kids were asked, and three six-year-olds had said they'd seen 17 nasties in total. But kids are big fibbers in front of their mates to sound cool. Conservative MP Graham Bright also said, Those are unacceptable. I believe that uh, research is taking place and it will show that these films not only affect young people, but I believe they affect adults as well. Mm, not so bright, actually. Another Conservative MP, Sir Bernard Brain, summarised, In the privacy of the home, it would be possible to slow down a video, dwell on particular scenes and experiment in a palpably unhealthy way. And if these movies were going to deprave and corrupt, who knows what could happen, especially now you can rent them at the push of a button. Stanley Kubrick put it best when Clockwork Orange was being cited as the inspiration for a series of unrelated horrific crimes committed. To try and fasten any responsibility on art as the cause of life seems to me to put the case the wrong way around. Art consists of reshaping life, but it does not create life nor cause life. Hmm, yeah, anyway, so the real research was promptly ignored, with academic Dr Clifford Hill going so far as to steal it and firing the research team. In 1983, our guy Graham Not So Bright introduced a private member's bill to the House of Commons, which was passed as the Video Recordings Act 1984. It stated all videos released after the 1st of September 1985 had to comply with the Act and be submitted for classification by the BBFC. Anything released on video before then had to be resubmitted within three years, so as well as all the low-budget horror films the Act was intended to curb, certain high-profile films got caught up in the fray, including The Exorcist, which was never submitted for video certification, and Straw Dogs, which was denied a cert. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre was only passed by the BBFC in 1999, a quarter of a century after its release, even though it has a surprising lack of gore. A movie called The Fun House was added onto the list despite being relatively tame, because they got it confused with the Fun House, aka Last House on Dead End Street. The whole thing was really slapdash at times. Now, the cost of submitting a film to the BBFC for certification 
cost £500. So a lot of the smaller distributors decided to give up the ghost after the grace period ended. The first nasty I ever saw was Cannibal Apocalypse, and that's one of the better ones, as it holds up as a cohesive film with John Saxon. Put it down. Cannibalism. At least one nasty was put on the list due to only its title or its cover, and the film itself was horrendously boring. thing that ever happened in front of a camera. Snuff is so shit, but it was marketed as an actual snuff film, so the clampdown was real harsh. Overall, the frenzy over video nasties pushed a lot of otherwise unseen movies to the forefront of our VCRs, inspired music, games and films of their own, and gave way to what I guess is a pretty reliable certification system for home video in the UK, if you like having one of the most heavily censored video industries in Europe. Not to mention a fantastic episode of The Young Ones. Michael and I are going to indulge in an all-night orgy of sex and violence. Many of the 72 movies on the DPP's list have garnered a cult following, and you'll likely have heard of at least a couple, some of which have even been released uncut today. I still don't know what the big deal is. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd love to know about your favourite nasties in the comments, and if there's any movies you'd like me to talk about, let me know! A very special thank you to the generous and incredibly patient contributors on Patreon, and to you for watching. I'm Sophie, and this has been Soft Focus. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba